Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Cardiac Wire Show. My name is Madeline Kane, and I'm the host of the Cardiac Wire Show and the editor of Cardiac Wire. I am joined here today for our first ever show by Jim Canfield and Dr. Scott Flam from PIA Medical, and they're going to talk to us about cardiac image post-processing. So Dr. Uh, Flam and Jim, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, great to be here. Yep, happy to be here. To start us off, can you both tell us a little bit about yourselves? Jim, I'll let you start. All right. I'm Jim Canfield. Uh, I've been in the technology services world since before the internet. Um, first as a developer and an engineer, systems engineer, and then in the business side after I got my MBA. Um, so when I got to, I've been a consultant with PIA for a number of years and then uh, took over the helm as uh, president and CEO about three years ago. I have been a cardiac, cardiovascular radiologist for probably more years than I want to admit. So uh, a, a few years under the belt, that's for sure. Done so at major institutions, including Clinic Foundation and the Texas Heart Institute uh, based in Houston, Texas. Uh, and I've had the privilege of working uh, with PIA for, gosh, about a decade now. I think that's right, Jim. That's that right. Correct? Yeah. yeah. Wow. So it sounds like you're both great people to talk about cardiac image post-processing then. Well, we think we know a little bit about it. That's for sure. <laughs> All right. So can you talk a little bit more, um, Jim, maybe if you could talk a little bit more about what PIA is? Sure. So PIA's roots are in the core lab. We were an imaging core lab to begin with. We're serving the clinical trial and research markets, very focused on re reproducibility, accuracy, consistency. Um, and we've gradually shifted over to apply those same standards over to the hospital and imaging center market. Um, there's a, a balance there. And so much more of a recurring revenue and constant need in that area. Uh, so we've been doing the medical image post-processing for with CT and MR uh, for, as, as we've said, about 10 years. And why might an imaging provider or department want to outsource their Im medical image post-processing? there can be a real benefit in bringing consistency standardization of post-processing of images so that all of the physicians reviewing the studies, these same groups of studies, have a similar basis and perspective in looking at the clinical studies that have been performed, how they've been analyzed, uh, and we certainly hope as well the interpretation of them. And so bringing that, that uh, through line all the way through the process can really help give us a consistency and standardization that we just haven't had as much previously. And I would say if you, to outsource something, it's typically a very discrete, defined process that needs an expertise. You know, if you file your taxes, you do it, it's very defined and you, file, you find a CPA. And this uh, part of the workflow in a radiology department is very defined and can be plucked out and plugged in somewhere else. So outsourcing makes this very um, a doable for this part of the process, the workflow. Um, our clients use us for a number of reasons uh, why they come to us. It may be a staffing shortage issue. Um, it may be they're evaluating a 3D lab and they realize the costs have just gotten too expensive for that. There may be just the software costs. Um, we've heard standardization um, is another issue. Sometimes kind of outsourcing your standardization and some issues to a third party uh, lets you do that uh, with, with a more gentle hand internally. So a number, a number of different reasons why folks come to us. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think the, the uh, staffing issue is an increasingly big one because during COVID, we've had so many people leave the workforce and particularly in the healthcare arena. Uh, we certainly noticed that at uh, the major medical institutions throughout the country and smaller institutions as well. Uh, and so you've got limited number of people and they're all busy doing so many clinical things uh, to take care of the patients. And so being able to have an additional hand through PIA to be able to do that image post-processing, which uh, can be quite time consuming, uh, can really be really beneficial. And then another aspect is 
allowing physicians to really work at the top of their license uh, and those people and being able to focus on the interpretation of the examinations, looking at both the qualitative and quantitative data that arises uh, out of these studies and putting that all together and doing so in both a time efficient and a cost efficient manner uh, can really be helpful and is critical for the healthcare arena. Uh, and particularly in the cardiovascular realm, where we have such complicated studies, such complex information to integrate together into a final diagnosis, we hope that comes together. Yeah. So you mentioned it's particularly prominent in the cardiovascular realm or particularly important in the cardiovascular realm. Um, and my understanding is that the recent ACC guidelines came out and resulted in an uptick in cardiac CTs. Has that affected the field of cardiac image post-processing? I think absolutely. I mean, both cardiac MRI and cardiac, C, uh, cardiac CT have had a not insignificant rise in, in volume scans that are performed because of physicians recognizing to an even greater degree how critical these studies are and how critical it is to get them integrated into the diagnostic uh, pathway for patients. Uh, and both cardiac CT and cardiac MRI have become level one indications under the appropriate scenario and the appropriate patient. Uh, and so these numbers have only continued to increase and they really are both fantastic technologies uh, being non-invasive and allowing us to make incredible diagnoses uh, and often very quickly in patients to help get them through their care pathways faster, more efficiently. So how do both uh, Dr. Flam and Jim, how do you see the field of uh, image post-processing or outsourcing image post-processing evolve in the future? Well, I, I, I'll go first. I, I think it's, it's going to continue to grow. Um, I think we're going to see more technology get involved, more uh, and some of the AI things that are coming around will shrink the human aspect to it. Um, but we've seen so many times in the past the lesson that technology is not the sole answer. So I think there will always be the technology with the human is always going to be the best solution. So we'll always have a, a man in the loop, a human in the loop. Uh, in this post-processing process, but I think the technology will get smarter and faster. I think the workflow will become much more transparent as well. And I think there's another aspect that PIA has really been on the forefront of, and we talk about cloud-based procedures and processes, uh, and mostly we think about uh, you know, com large computer server farms, et cetera, doing this. But for PIA, we've actually been a cloud-based process for quite a while in that our analysts are distributed all over the country. And so they are they don't have to be in one place. They used to all be in Seattle with us, but not anymore. Uh, they're all over the place in different time zones and give us much greater flexibility mm -hmm. in being able to serve all of the, the clients that we have. Thank you so much, Jim and Dr. Flam, for joining us today. And thank you to the audience for tuning in to our first ever show. If what Dr. Flam and Jim have been talking about today interests you, um, feel free to reach out to Jim and his team. They would love to talk to you more about it.